guys, welcome. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to order carnivore at a restaurant. My name's Caitlin, I'm from Grass Fed Girl and I love eating steak and I love eating meat and it's really helped me with my health. And today we're gonna to talk about how when you're out and about to eat at a restaurant and order in the best way to maintain your health goals. Okay, so first things first is plan ahead. Plan ahead as much as you can. I like to get online like at Yelp or look directly at the company's website and you can find out what they have on the menu so that you can do a little pre-planning before you get there. So sometimes they're gonna have stuff that is not gonna fit into your diet and you don't wanna be like a deer in headlights when you get the waitress there and they're gonna be asking you what you want and you're like, I don't know, and you have a little meltdown. So. Make sure that you look ahead on Yelp or get on the actual website of the company. And a lot of websites really are really good. So especially if they're chains, so something like an Outback Steakhouse, you can see every single thing that they have and you can know ahead of time what you're gonna order. And that helps a lot. Have your go-to options in mind before you go out of the house. Um, some of my go-to options around here are burgers at fast food. So, I mean, it's all depends on your budget, but if you're out and about, you know, it gets really expensive eating a steak at a restaurant. It could be $30 right away or even more, 30 to $50. It depends on how fancy you're going. You know, even at an Outback, even at an Applebee's, you know, a steak is gonna be uh, 20 bucks. So you've got to plan ahead. And usually my go-to is going through the drive-thru. I just get some burger patties with no bun and no nothing, just the patties. Now make sure they let you order uh, all the carts. You do not want to get there and they charge you for five Whoppers, for example. That's gonna be about $25, so that's no good. Um, I've, the best I've found is a Wendy's. Wendy's uh, will let you order, I'm talking really fast food here, uh, they're about $1 per patty and you can order just this plain single patties and they're about 99 cents. So that is the best option I found. So you can get about four patties for under $5 and that's a really good deal. So I like Wendy's the taste. I find McDonald's taste like garbage. Uh, it's very, very uh, dry. I have not found that I liked it. It was very lean. So Wendy's all the way if you can find one. A more upscale option, you can go to something like an Applebee's, an Outback, Logan Steakhouse. American food you know, restaurants are going to have more of a meat option. So sometimes I've even gotten a chicken breast and I will get cheese sometimes at a, at a restaurant because it's just a way to get healthy fat. And if I can only get maybe a chicken breast, well, I'm gonna put some cheese on top so that I can choke it down, you know? Um, and that's an affordable option. Sometimes they have a half chicken. That's a really good option. And sometimes it doesn't have too much seasoning. And like I said, if it's a chain, you can research, make sure it doesn't have sugar added, things like that. Um, but a rotisserie chicken, of course, is a really good option. Anywhere they have sort of a roasted chicken or a um, half chicken is awesome. Smoked chicken. Um, that brings me to my other go-to, which is a barbecue restaurant. I love barbecue. It's usually pretty good. Just make sure there's no sauces added prior to. Usually they let you put your own sauce or you can say no sauce or sauce on the side. Um, I always love barbecue. Usually it's really, a lot of places don't put a lot of seasoning ahead of time. I go to one place here in Nashville that has just salt and pepper on their brisket. That is my favorite and I always ask for fatty brisket so that I can get more fat. I hate the dry, lean, and a lot of times so you can't add the sauce because it's very sugary so you wanna make sure you have some fat coming from somewhere. And I do, they do have a vinegar sauce that I really love and it's, um, it's very, very low carb so I will use that sometimes. That's called Jack's Creek. That's at Martin's here in Nashville. It's a local chain we have. It's very good. I post about it on Instagram a lot. Make sure you follow me over there for lots of good tips. Um, another place that's really good is Mediterranean restaurants. Mediterranean restaurants always have a lot of meat on the menu. You can always get a skewer of something, uh, maybe three or four different ones. Sometimes they have ground meat on a skewer. Sometimes they have chicken 
or beef or lamb even. It's usually really bit good bet to go to a Mediterranean restaurant. I try to avoid most Asian restaurants because a lot of it's carbs. It has a lot of sauces. It's really difficult to find enough meat to sustain yourself. Uh, at, a, at an Asian restaurant. I mean, I'm just overgeneralizing. If you've had a different experience, then great. One more of my go-to places is the Brazilian barbecue. It has so much meat and it's all you can eat. And all the meat is usually very lightly seasoned. It doesn't have a lot of sauces or anything like that. So it's very easy to control what you're getting. And it's a really good value, especially some of them are open for lunch and it's around $30 for lunch. Um, and a lot of people go that for one day and that's all they eat the whole day. Um, some people go and then fast for two or three days. I don't really do that, but um, go hungry for sure if you're gonna pay $30 for that meal. And then lunch is cheaper. And then if you wanna go for dinner, it's more about $50, but that's a really fun thing to do when you're carnivore for a special occasion uh, or go every day if you can afford it. <laughs> Not me, we keep it for special occasions for sure. And that makes it special and fun, but you know you can eat almost every single thing there except the salad bar. And even on the salad bar, they have shrimp and uh, some fish and things. I like the Texas de Brazil. I've also been to Fogo de Chao. And there's also a big one is Rodizio. We have Texas de Brazil and Rodizio here. So those are both good options. And then Fogo is all across the country. That's another really good option for a carnivore meal. Also brunch places are really good because you can sometimes get a la carte, like um, bacon, eggs. You can just order side items and get three or four. You can get sausage, bacon, eggs, uh, omelets. You know, there's a lot of really good. Make sure when you order, especially I know at IHOP, they put bake, uh, pancake batter in the omelets. That's really not good. You don't want that. <laughs> that has a lot of carbs and gluten if you're not wanting that. Another place that's really worked well is buffets. So buffets have a lot of meat on them, especially like a Sunday brunch buffet or um, if you're going on a cruise ship, <laughs> for example, there's a lot of meat on buffets. Um, you just have to know yourself if you can handle saying no to the other foods. Uh, you have to check in before you, check in with yourself before you go in there because it can be tempting to eat the other stuff. Um, I know there's one place we go for brec for brunch here, like on special occasions for um, Mother's Day or something. They have a ton of prime rib. They have shrimp cocktail. You know, lots of great options. A make your own omelet bar. So there would be a great place to go for a carnivore meal. Um, another place I've been that's a, a little bit it's really good. they have really good stuff for carnivores is the golden corral they have um sirloin on sundays and at night it's the same thing they have smoked smoked sirloin yeah and then they have grilled sirloin and the smoked sirloin was like so tender i mean these places you know i travel a lot so when I'm home, I eat really clean, but when I'm out on the road, I just try to stay full of meat. So um, I'm sorry if I'm offending your sensibilities if you are really eating clean, because when you're out on the road, I find I just have to be a little bit more lenient with what I'm eating. So um, as far as quality goes, but when I'm home, I eat a lot of grass-fed beef and organic everything and pasture race and all that. Um, but when I'm traveling a little more lenient with that, Another tip for a restaurant is ask the server to bag up your side items beforehand. So if they bring your side items that automatically come with your meal most of the time, they will be very tempting and hard not to eat them. So if you have a baked potato or something, usually I say, will you just bag that up to go and then uh, they will bring that in a bag and then I just won't have to see it and I can take that home to somebody else who may be eats that who lives at home or my family, my extended family, something like that. So that's a good way to kind of keep it out of your vision and you don't, but you also don't feel like you're just wasting it. Um, sometimes I'll also dine with my um, stepmom or something like that and I'll give her my broccoli or the cauliflower or whatever side asparagus that the steak comes with. So that's a really good idea. 
Something I really like to do when I'm away from home is just go into the grocery store. A lot of grocery stores have to-go bars that are already ready. So some places have a wing bar, some places, I mean, I live in Nashville. It's kind of, some parts of it very fancy. Some parts of it are just kind of down home, but you never know what you're going to find. I mean, I went into a Publix recently and they had a full wing bar and it had the ingredients written. So, I mean, that's something you could eat as long as it didn't have extra sugars or a lot of additives. So that was something, um, sometimes I just get cold cuts. I know they're not the best. Um, one, one brand that's really good is Applegate. Um, sometimes I just eat boar's head, for example, uh, and I know it has some preservatives and stuff, but you know, I look at it as better than starving or better than eating something really off plan, like a granola bar or something like that. So I'll just get some cold cuts from the deli and eat those in my car, for example. That's really tasty. If you like salami, something like that, uh, that will work. So I like to go into the grocery store a lot. Same thing with the rotisserie chicken is a good option. Just look at the ingredients, read them, make sure there's not a lot of added sugars or sauces on your rotisserie chicken. You could also get cheese slices if you do eat cheese. I mean, cheese can be kind of a problem, but you know, that's another video, but be careful with the cheese if you eat it. Another strategy is to just eat enough to get home. So this is a money saving strategy and also just kind of a coping strategy. You want to eat enough food just to get home. So sometimes if you don't want to order a $30 steak, just order something that where you're uh, keeping your mouth full or just keeping your hands busy. Um, I know sometimes on carnivore, you're really not as hungry as you used to be. So just eat a little bit and then get home and eat more. So um, sometimes I would order a, an item that was more affordable, eat just a little couple bites or maybe, you know, some deviled eggs or something like that. Then get home, eat more when you get home to satisfy your real hunger. So don't try to fill up at the restaurant, just kind of make it through, be social and get there. And, the, and then the same token, you could also show up to restaurants and social things after everyone has already eaten and you can eat at home. So you can kind of go at the end and be like, hey, what's up, I'm here. And you'll be full from eating at home, but you'll still get that social aspect there. Sometimes you can just go, sometimes I drink iced tea or, or decaf coffee and I just sit there and chit chat with people. So that's another option. And then of course you could fast. So fasting, I'm not a big fan of fasting because I have a lot of issues around deprivation and diets that I've done in the past. So I'm not a big fan of fasting, but a lot of people are and they will fast through uh, different social situations or traveling and then eat whenever they get there or whenever they get super hungry. So that's another uh, great strategy if that works for you. I said this before, but there's certain restaurants that will let you order a la carte. Um, one day, for example, I went to Chipotle. They let me order just a little side of meat. You know how you could say extra meat? Well, they, that costs about $3. So you can get a couple extra sides of meat and just sit there and eat them. And I ate at Chipotle for less than $5. And then I actually ate more later when I got home. Um, that was a good strategy. It lasted me about two hours while I was out. And then, you know, I could always eat more later. Another place that I know is Cracker Barrel will let you order a la carte steaks. That's a really good option <laughs> if you're out and about at Cracker Barrel. You just kind of have to do some research and uh, plan ahead a little bit with that. The main thing when you're ordering is always ask for no sauces, no extra dressings. Just ask if things are breaded or fried that can just give you some more information. Um, because sometimes if you're not really clear, you can wind up with a surprise. Uh, one time I asked, there was a crab cake, and I said, what is in the crab cake? And they were like, nothing, it's 100% crab. And I was just like, no, that defies scientific logic, you know. It has to have a binder of some sort. And then later on, she's like, oh yeah, it's pancake mix. And I'm like, what? You told me there was nothing in it, which I really didn't believe. Um, but so I try to also avoid gluten as much as I can. I mean, obviously that's a grain and also a plant. So 
um, you always just got to investigate because people don't really know what you're asking for or why you're asking. So uh, that was another good lesson to learn. <laughs> So a lot of the time when it comes to ordering at restaurants and out to eat, it's going to be about you putting yourself first and, and being able to vocalize what you need from the staff and knowing that your health goals are number one and putting yourself first, even though it can be scary sometimes to tell them what you really need. Um, it's about having that self-esteem, having that inner guidance telling you, um, this is what I really need right now and being assertive, but yet nice and friendly in order to get what you need. Um, it just, your goals are not going to happen without you standing up for yourself and saying, uh, who is number one. So it's you and your goals are worth it. And I know you can do it. Okay. Before I go, I want to make sure you subscribe to my list so that you're the first one to know when my ebook is coming out. It's at the designer now and it's looking beautiful and it has so much, almost 200 pages of information all about how to do carnivore without overthinking it and messing up because you get in your own way. I've made all the mistakes for you. I figured all the um, pitfalls out so you don't have to. So make sure you subscribe down below. It's grassfedlist.com. Leave me a thumbs up because other people will see this video if they know that you like it and it helps me out a lot and subscribe and ring the little bell so you never miss one of my videos. Thanks so much. See you next time.